When it comes to horror, mystery, suspense, and goth, there's no one more influential than Edgar Allan Poe. Often misunderstood, this literary icon was as much an enigma as the characters in his writings. We're going to take a look into some of his poems and short stories, as well as the events in his extraordinary life, and uncover some of the mystery that is Edgar Allan Poe. First penned in 1843 and published in The Pioneer, Poe wrote The Telltale Heart while living in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. Poe was likely paid just $10 for the story, and it was initially rejected by several publishers, citing that they preferred something a little more quiet. It was finally accepted by the new magazine in January of 1843. Poe may have based the story off of a few real-life events that occurred in and around the time of his life. The first was the murder of Salem, Massachusetts resident Captain Joseph White by Richard Crononshield in 1830. Crononshield and his brother George, as part of a conspiracy to steal the old man's iron chest of treasure, snuck into his home and beat him to death while he lay in his bed. This late-night attack of an old man is reminiscent of a key theme in the Telltale Heart. The second story is the murder trial of James Wood. Wood murdered his daughter, Sarah Ann Peck, and during the trial claimed insanity as a defense. Although in Victorian-era thought, insanity, or madness, was assumed to be characterized by high levels of mania, Wood was reported to have been cool, calm, and collected in his demeanor. One of the earliest insanity pleas, this story was covered by a reporter working for Alexander's Weekly Messenger on April 1, 1840. That reporter was Edgar Allan Poe. This could explain the narrator's calm disposition and insistence on sanity over guilt. As with many of Poe's stories, the point of view is told from the perspective of an unreliable narrator. An unreliable narrator is an untrustworthy storyteller, most often used in narratives with a first-person point of view. The point of it is that you can't always tell what's true and what isn't. We aren't told much about the narrator, and it's in the gaps that we may find insight. Although many assume the narrator to be male, there are many who hold that the narrator could have been female, as the vast majority of house servants in the era were indeed women. Given Poe's complicated relationships with the women in his life, and the fact that there are no pronouns given to the character, it may be a reasonable assumption. The narrator of Telltale Heart believes first and foremost in her sanity. She has no problem admitting guilt so long as she is deemed to be lucid. She describes her condition as having an over-acuteness of the senses. She can hear things better than the average person, and that hearing can extend to the supernatural. She is obsessed with the cataract eye of the old man and focuses her plans to murder not just the old man, but his eye, which she views as synonymous with evil. Although there are several theories as to her condition, a popular notion is that she suffers from early schizophrenia, where auditory hallucinations are common. Even less is said about the old man, but Poe does describe several of his characteristics. For one, we know that the old man has some wealth since the narrator claims to have no interest in his money. We know that he is afraid of the night, or what may happen in the night. He has a cataract eye, which the narrator finds to be disgustingly offensive. The eye seems to have a grip on the narrator, strong enough to justify murder. It is presumed that he is frail and weak, since with very little effort he is smothered to death underneath a mattress. After the murder, the police arrive. We don't know many things about the cops, but we do know that after given a tour of the house, they stay. Perhaps they stayed for small talk, or maybe they're inclined to be suspicious. There's another character or characters who are silent. The neighbor who informed the police. It's important to note that the murder took place at midnight, and to get a hold of the police at that hour, you had to walk to the station. Whatever they heard was loud enough to warrant that action. Without the neighbor, the narrator might never have been caught. True. Nervous. Very, very dreadfully nervous. I had been, and am. But how can you say that I am mad? So let's summarize the story. Poe uses a technique called in medias res, or in the middle of, meaning that the beginning of the narrative is actually in the middle of the story. 
It begins with an unnamed character asserting his or her sanity, presumably during a confession. At the time of Poe, those with mental illness were deemed mad. But the narrator asserts a calm disposition dispelling the myth. To prove the narrator's sanity, she must also prove her guilt. The narrator then tells the tale of an old man in her care who has a pale blue eye that chills her blood. She sets out to murder the old man in his sleep, cutting up the body and buries the remains in the floorboards. The police arrive after a complaint from the neighbors and enter the house to investigate. When they find nothing out of sorts, they engage in some casual conversation. During this time, the narrator hears the sound of the already dead old man's heartbeat. It gets louder and louder until the sound is unbearable. She believes the police can hear it as well and are playing games with her. In her desperation, she admits to the crime, beating on the floorboards where the body was buried. One of his eyes resembled that of a vulture a pale blue eye with a film over it. Whenever it fell upon me, my blood ran cold, and so, by degrees, very gradually, I made up my mind to take the life of the old man and thus rid myself of the eye forever. The old man's eye is blue with a film or veil covering it. It is described to resemble a vulture's eye, symbolic of death. There's a sense of disgust that accompanies age, and although the old man was loved, his eye was a grotesque reminder of the inevitability of death. After hiding the old man's body, the narrator replaced the board so cleverly, so cunningly, that no human eye, not even his, could have detected anything wrong. That statement implies that at some point, the eye could see hidden or secret things. Ever present throughout the story is the sound of a heartbeat. First heard just before the narrator attacks and kills the old man, it is implied that she can hear it coming from him. However, there are comments throughout the story of a ticking watch and death watch beetles, both similar in rhythm to a heartbeat. Death is the enemy in the story and is represented by the ticking of time, the beats of the death watch beetles, and the unending heartbeat reminding the narrator of the inevitability of her demise. The first sentence brings up mental illness. The narrator asks, why will you say that I am mad? The great irony in the story is that the narrator, in order to prove innocence, must prove guilt. She would rather be guilty than be deemed mad. Have you been listening? Yes, sir, of course. Because you seem distracted. Maybe there's... You've had some other thought and something else has come to mind? Meta. Are you all right? Madness, as it was called in the time of Poe, was greatly misunderstood and was often fed with stereotypes of rambling maniacs who struck fear into the hearts of those they encountered. But mental illness doesn't often present the way it's assumed. Although the narrator is nervous, she presents calm and collected, unexpected for the day. The narrator has delusions, making claims to hear things in heaven, earth, and hell, using biblical language to imply omniscience and a larger significance than reality. She also may have auditory hallucinations, hearing a heartbeat and ringing when no one else could hear. There is tremendous anxiety surrounding the situation beginning with the start of the story and coming full circle at the end. Although the condition of the narrator is unknown, the symptoms resemble that of schizophrenia. Although during Poe's time, schizophrenia wasn't named or even a diagnosis, the disease was first identified as a mental illness by Dr. Emile Krapelin in 1887. Some speculate that Poe himself was bipolar, which would have given him tremendous insight into the experiences of mental illness. The Telltale Heart is one of Poe's most famous stories, and if you like scary, creepy, and gothic, then this should be your first choice. Be sure to visit poemovies.com to shop in our store and to use our free lesson plans. And don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell to get updates on new content.